sleeping. All right, so if you're having trouble sleeping at night, it could be a health issue. That's right. A new study says insomnia can increase the risk of type 2 diabetes. Clinical nurse specialist and our contributor, Alice Benjamin, joins us now. Thanks for being here, Nurse Alice. Why should people worry about this? I think this is very important because diabetes is the seventh leading cause of death in the United States. About 37 point. 5 million people have it, 8.5 don't even know that they have it. So diabetes is a very serious problem. And with this new study showing that insomnia can increase our blood sugars and increase your risk for diabetes, knowing that piece of information is going to be instrumental with how we manage diabetes moving forward. Uh, break down, what is the relationship between insomnia and increased blood sugar? Okay, so there's lots of information out there that shows that mood disorders can significantly impact our sleep. So there's a lot of depression, anxiety, stress that's out there that can disrupt our sleep. And when our sleep is disrupted, our hormones, such as our cortisol, growth hormone, or ghrelin, those get dysregulated. And th when it's dysregulated, that can cause a spike in our blood sugar. So, you know, that is what the researchers believe uh, to be the case in the relation between this, but they're going to need to be doing further studies to, in fact, make sure that that is the relationship between insomnia and the diabetes. Mm. And there are a lot of theories out there about how much sleep we need and also a lot of reasons why we don't yeah. get enough. But what is your consensus? How much sleep do we actually need? Okay. So most adults should have anywhere between seven to nine hours of sleep. Uh, but according to the CDC, one out of every three adults is sleep deprived. Sleep disorders are very common. About 70 million people have them. Um, and anywhere up to 50% of people um, experience insomnia. That's problems falling asleep, staying asleep, or you're, you keep waking up during the night and can't fall back asleep. And so um, it's definitely an issue that exists. And so we just got to work on a few things to improve our sleep um, hygiene. And if we can do that, we can literally sleep our way to being healthier. All right. Just want to make sure you're clear. Seven to nine hours per night, right? Because that ain't happening in the Brown household. <laughs> Let me tell you yes, that. Yes, Michael. A <laughs> night. <laughs> if you aren't sleeping, what should you ask your doctor? You know, I think it's very important that you get uh, a physical because there are certain medical conditions, sometimes certain medications, or sometimes we're depressed um, and stressed out and don't even recognize it. So getting a physical will be important to rule out any metabolic or environmental reasons that could be contributing to that. And once all that's cleared, um, perhaps, you know, we can make a tweak um, in one of those things or, you know, just work on your sleep hygiene, making uh -huh. sure that, you know, you have sound, you know, ocean waves, the room is dark. Maybe you had a nice glass of milk before bed, something relaxing to help you get to sleep and stay asleep. A nice glass of milk before bed. That's what Brownlee is going to have tonight. That's is that what we're calling it now? <laughs> All right, Nurse yes. Alice. <laughs> we appreciate it. Thanks so much. Great information. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, the stage at a new park in Pasadena is getting a name inspired by hometown legends.